Number two is the offensive line. Number question number one is who plays where? From what I'm hearing, Jarrett Patterson will in fact get a shot at left tackle, but he's most likely going to be limited this spring as he continues to recover from his his the foot injury that cost him the end of the 2020 season. But then what, who shakes out after that? I expect on day one of spring ball, I expect it to be sort of a Patterson at left tackle, uh, Dylan Gibbons at left guard, Zeke Carell at center, John Dirksen at right guard, and Josh Lugger at right tackle. That's what I expect it to be sort of on day one, but I think it's going to change a lot. And then what happens after that? Uh, is Andrew Kristoff going to get a chance to battle for a starting tackle job? Do they move him inside like Robert Hainsey talked about in a recent one-on-one -on -one interview with him where he actually thinks Kristoff could be even better inside? Well, there's bigger needs at guard than there are at tackle. Can Quinn Carroll maybe be a guy that pushes for time at tackle, which then maybe moves Josh Lugg inside? Or is it a situation where – you know, Quinn Carroll's still kind of grooming to be that next guy, and he goes, he and, and Christophe goes inside, or maybe Christophe stays a tackle to provide depth, and Quinn Carroll moves inside to compete at guard. Michael Carmody, is he going to get a chance to make a push this spring as, as a redshirt freshman? And then, of course, Notre Dame has two extremely talented early enrollees along the offensive line, Blake Fisher and Rocco Spindler. How will they play? That's a big question mark. There's a lot of talent on the offensive line. And in some areas, there's experience. Josh Lugg now has, I believe, eight or nine starts under his belt. Jared Patterson has a two full years, essentially, of starting experience. Dylan Gibbons even started the game last year. He started the Syracuse game. Zeke Carell has two starts, and he played two starts against two pretty good football teams playing against Alabama and North Carolina. So there's some level of experience. But I also think there's a lot of young talent that needs an opportunity to shine. Offensive line is one of those positions where experience is even more important than it is maybe for a skill position. So how quickly will those young players grow up? How much of an opportunity will they get this spring? I would love to see Notre Dame open up most of these positions to competition, if not all of them. Look, Jarrett Patterson's going to start somewhere. We know that, right? But if Tosh Baker has a great spring, especially with Jarrett Patterson limited, and he's clearly ready to kind of play, then then maybe you move Jarrett Patterson somewhere else. Maybe you move him back to center. Maybe you move him to right tackle. Maybe you move him to guard. I think Jarrett Patterson playing somewhere other than center would be great for him. Uh, number one, I think he can handle any position at a high level. I think he could be just as good at tackle as he was center, if not better, and it helps him from an NFL draft standpoint, right? So that's a that's a win-win. But it doesn't have to just be left tackle. Maybe you like Tosh Baker so much that you say, hey, we need to get him in the lineup, but we want to keep Jarrett Patterson on the left side. So you move Tosh Baker to right tackle, and then that gets you to bump Josh Lugg inside. I think that even though Gibbons and Dirksen might be the starters day one in the spring, I don't think it's a guarantee or a given that they're going to be the starters come the end of spring. And In fact, I'd be a little surprised if both of them were there. So do you want to solidify the tackle spots and then figure out guard? And how does that look? Is that going to be Tosh Baker moving and Josh Lugg moving? What is it going to look like? So then once your tackle situation is figured out, then that allows you to then move some guys inside. So if if Notre Dame says, okay, look, Jared Patterson is going to play tackle. Josh Lugg is going to play tackle. Tosh Baker is going to be a tackle. So then you take one of Christoph or Quinn Carroll, move him inside to guard. Let him battle for a starting guard job. You, you take Michael Carmody and the two freshmen, Rocco Spindler and Blake Fisher, and you allow them to battle. And then, because I think with that, you know, Zeke Carell is going to be a junior next year. He started two games. I think there's going to be a, a growth in his game from an experience and leadership standpoint. You've got the veterans at tackle. You're in a situation where you can groom a younger guard if the need is there. Maybe it's a situation where, like we saw in 2017, where you've got two guys that can play that position. And we saw with Robert Hainsey and Tommy Kramer at right tackle. So maybe it's a situation where a veteran starts at guard and they work a Blake Fisher or a Rocco Spindler or a Michael Carmody in every other series or every third series, something along those lines. So a lot of those things are going to have to shake out. And that's just about who's going to line up where. The next question is, how effective will the line be? Will they be able to go out and play at a high level? I don't think anyone is or should expect this line to play like last year's line. That unit had over 120 career starts when the season started. This team, won't, this group won't even have 40 career starts, and the vast majority of starts they do have are from one guy. He has over half of the career starts. That's Jared Patterson. So how quickly can this line get up to speed, number one? 
And I think back to question number one, I think those two two things tie together. The nice thing about a tempo RPO filled offense that does a lot of the things that I'm talking about from a quick game, a screen, a a getting in the right call all the time with an RPO is it takes a lot of pressure off your offensive line. Simplifying the concept to where maybe you you emphasize more versatility and more diversity from a a personnel standpoint, a formational standpoint, while also pushing the tempo, but then lessening the number of plays that you run. That could allow your younger players to get adapted more quickly. Because look, here's the deal. If you're running inside zone or outside zone, the blocking doesn't change for the offensive line. Really, if you're an 11 personnel, 12 personnel, 10 personnel, 21, 22, whatever you're in, for the most part, your concepts are going to be the same. I either have a guy outside of me or I don't. And those rules are the same. So there's a lot of different things they can do while simplifying the packages for the, the offensive linemen to allow them to then focus on smaller package, greater focus on execution, greater focus on tempo, greater focus on playing a physical vertical game, and less emphasis on needing to know a lot of different things. So I think a simplified yet focusing on explosiveness offense takes a lot of pressure off the offensive line and allows them to play at an even higher level than you would before. You cannot ask them to carry the team like you asked the 2020 offensive line to do, like you asked the 2017 offensive line to do, and like you really asked the 2019 offensive line to do, and they weren't capable of doing it enough, and that's why your offense was a little bit more inconsistent that year. So they got to figure that out, and how that gets answered is going to is going to go a long way towards determining how good this team is going to be in 2020. 